In this video, we're going to continue talking about the Graph API and how you can use other programming languages to access the Graph API to make changes. In this video, we are going to use PowerShell, but you can use any programming or scripting language like Python, Go, C Sharp, basically anything that can make a web request. Let's go ahead and get started. What we are going to do is build a PowerShell script that will read user profile information and make changes to it. In order to do that, we need to access the Graph API as an application. And the first thing we need to do for that is create an application registration. We'll use this application registration to get an access token from the Graph API, and then use that token to make changes by calling the Graph API directly. Let's get started out in our Microsoft Intra Admin Center. You can get there by going to intra.microsoft.com. We'll expand out identity here, applications, and let's go to app registrations. Let's go ahead and create a new registration. We'll give this application a name. I'm just going to call it the PowerShell Graph API demo. You can select your supported account types. Right now, I'd recommend just leaving it at your tenant, but you can allow multi-tenant or even personal accounts like Skype or Xbox. And then down here at the bottom, you can input a redirect URI. We don't need this for our application. It is optional, so I'm just going to leave it blank. And let's go ahead and click Register. So this application registration is basically going to be the user account that we use to access the Graph API. And user accounts always have a username and a password. In our case, our username here that we want to worry about is the application or the client ID. So let's go ahead and copy this client ID. We'll need it later when we get to our PowerShell script. Okay, I saved that off screen for right now. Then we need some type of certificate or secret or password to authenticate ourselves. Next, let's go over to certificates and secrets. We're on the client secrets tab here. We'll click on new secret. We'll go ahead and put in a description for the secret. I'm just going to call it secret one. We can choose how long we want it to be valid for, when it will expire. This one will be six months from now. And let's go ahead and click on Add. Now that we have our secret value, what you want to do is make sure and copy and save this somewhere and treat it like a password, because that's basically what it is. So you want to keep it somewhere securely where it's not easily accessible by anybody else. And you want to make sure to do that because as soon as you navigate away from this page, if you were to come back to try to get the secret value, it's going to be masked and you're not going to be able to see it. So you'd have to just end up creating a new client secret. So I went ahead and copied this value and I'm going to save it off screen. Now that we basically have our client ID and client secret or a username and password, we have to give this application registration enough permissions inside a Graph API to do what we want the application to do. In order to do that, let's go over to API permissions. And by default, it's going to be able to read the signed in user profile. This is if we were using delegated permissions. Delegated permissions are where the application is acting on behalf of the signed in user. Our application, we're going to use application type permissions where the application just runs on its own and it's not acting on behalf of another user. Let's go ahead and click on Add Permission. We have a lot of different APIs here that we can interact with. We're just going to go straight to Microsoft Graph. And then again, those different permissions types I just talked about, we have each one right here that we want to assign. We have delegated permissions. Again, you're accessing Graph API as a signed in user or application permissions where it's running as a background service or a standalone service. Let's just stick with application permissions right now. And then we have to select the type of permissions that we want to assign. If we scroll through this list, we can see lots of different things that we can access using Graph API. We can take a look at like Microsoft bookings if you're building an application around that, or access to people's calendars or Teams call records and call events. Lots of different things here that we have access to basically any service inside of Microsoft that is supported behind the Graph API. What we're concerned about is dealing with user accounts. So let's take a quick search for directory. We'll expand out directory. We have a couple of different options here. Do we want to just read directory data, read and write directory data, or just manage restricted resources in the directory? 
script we have is going to read data and then also make changes to people's profiles inside of Active Directory or Enter ID. So let's go ahead and choose Read Write All. You can select more than one permission. You don't have to do just one at a time. We could go through and select a whole bunch of different permissions, but for right now, we'll just worry about this one. Go and click on Add Permissions, and we can see it added to our list of permissions here. Now, the thing we need to do next is also grant admin consent that basically allows this app registration to do it. We've listed it here as this is the one we want to use, but you'll have to have, I believe, a global administrator come in and grant the admin consent. So I'll go ahead and click on grant admin consent, just verifying that this is what we want to do. And let's go ahead and click on yes. Perfect. And now we can see the status change is granted now for my tenant. So let's do a quick recap. We created an app registration. It gave us a client ID, which we'll use as our username. We created a client secret that we'll basically use as a password. And then we granted permissions for this application registration, read and write all of our directory data. All right, now we switched over to our PowerShell script. And in the second line here, I put in a reference to the guide that I'm following out in the Microsoft Learn documentation. I'll also include this down in the video description. And we're going to go through and start building out our little application here in PowerShell on how to make changes to people's directory or profile. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to save those credentials that we created out for our application registration to be able to use those in order to get an access token. So a quick, easy way to do that is just to use get credential. So let me go ahead and run this command and it's gonna prompt us for our username which is our client ID, and then our client password or client secret. Okay, so I've saved those off screen. I'm going to paste the client ID in here. It's going to ask us for the password. Paste that in here also. And we now have a credential object. The next steps here, I'm going to save my tenant ID to a variable called tenant ID. And then we have our OAuth URI that includes our tenant ID. This is just the URI that we are going to query in order to get an access token to be able to work with the Graph API. So I will highlight both of these and press F8 and we'll get those saved and going there. Next, we need to create a request body that we're going to send in our HTTP request to get an access token. This is going to include the client ID and the client secret. We've got our scope set. We want to query the Graph API and our grant type is going to be client credentials. So I'll highlight all this and create this variable with these values. Then finally, we're going to make our request out to the Graph API to get our access token. We're going to use invoke rest method, the URI parameter and our variable there. We're going to use the post method, which means we want to make a change or get a response back. We've got our content type, and then our token request body. Let's go ahead and select this one here. Okay, that completed successfully. Let's take a quick look at what else is in this token request body that we got back. I'm sorry, token request response. You can see we got a token type. It's a bearer token. It expires in 3,600 seconds, basically, which is an hour. And then we have our access token. So what I want to do is take that access token and save it to its own variable. So I'm just referencing the token request response and accessing the access token property, saving it to its own variable. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll clear out the screen and take a look at access token. So here's our access token that we can use to query the Graph API as that application registration. Real quick, I want to go back to the Microsoft Graph Explorer. We took a look at this in a separate video and show you that that access token we just got is pretty much the same one that we got here. It's going to be different values, but it's the same idea. When you're working in Graph Explorer here, you're actually using the delegated permissions. We can see that here inside of modified permissions. We can see the different permissions that we've granted the Graph API to act on behalf of our user account. And you can see we can consent or unconsent or change any of those, like we've got the directory read write all. And then this is an access token for delegated permissions. Graph Explorer is acting on behalf of the signed in user account, which is me, 
whereas the script that we're building is using application permissions. Kind of going over that a couple of times, just want to reiterate and hopefully drive the idea home here. Let's switch back to our PowerShell script. Next, we need to start querying the Graph API. And in order to do that, we need to present our access token showing that we're authorized to do so. So we're going to create a header variable here with our header information. Our authorization is going to be that bearer token or access token that we saved to the variable. And then we put in a content type of application JSON, just basically saying we're expecting that content coming back to us to be in the JSON format. So we'll highlight these couple of lines here and save our header variable. And finally, the first request we're going to do is we're going to query the Graph API and get back user profile information for my account. So again, we'll use invoke rest method. This time we're just getting information. So we're going to use the get method. Here's the URI. It has the graph.microsoft.com. That's what we're querying. Version one, we're going to be looking at users. And then we have my UPN there, user principal name. And we're going to reference our header variable because that has our authorization information in it to query the Graph API. In fact, let me just highlight this first part here and we'll run it. And it immediately comes back and says, hey, you don't have a valid authentication token. That's why we have our headers here. It has our access token to get the information that we want. So we'll go ahead and do the whole line here and execute it. And you can see it comes back with my profile information. There's my name job title, email address, other things like that. Now, one of the things we did with the Graph Explorer is there's a lot more information that's on my user profile and you can make or modify your URI request to retrieve that additional information. So again, we're going to use the get method. Our URI is a little bit different here. We use the select parameter to just bring back user principal name the display name, and we'll look at my department. And we're using the same header variable. That authorization token in there is still good for an hour, so we can just continue to reuse it until it expires. Let's highlight these couple of lines here. And now we just get back the information that we put inside of our select query. There's my user principal main, my display name, and my department is IT. Now, when we set up the application registration, we said it was directory access and it was read and write. So let's try to make a change to my user account by changing my department. This is the same thing we did inside of the Graph Explorer demo I've previously published. Here, we're going to create a request body with the changes we want to make. It says currently my department is IT. Let's go ahead and change this to something like accounting. Okay, we'll go ahead and save our body variable. Now that body variable right there, that is a hash table inside of PowerShell. When we make this graph API request, it's expecting that to be in JSON format. Luckily, we have a convert to JSON PowerShell commandlet here. We're going to pass to it the body hash table, and that's going to convert it to JSON. And just real quick, let's take a look at those two different values just to show you what I'm looking at here. There's the body hash table. We have department and accounting. And then if we just look at body JSON, that puts it into JSON format. Let's go ahead and try to clear the screen again. So finally, we're going to invoke rest method again. We're going to use the patch method, which is saying we want to make a change to the resource we're accessing. Again, we're going to put in users and the UPN of my account here. We're reusing the same headers. And then our body is the body JSON formatted, where we're basically saying, hey, set the department to accounting. Let's go ahead and highlight this one and execute it. OK, looks like it completed successfully. Let's pull back up our previous command here, where we just pulled back my user principal name, display name, and department. And we can see my department is now accounting. This is just demoing how you can use the Graph API programmatically inside of whatever language you want to, to interact with it, as long as that language can make a web request. Now, PowerShell does have built-in commandlets that interact with the Graph API. This is in the Microsoft Graph PowerShell SDK module. However, you might still need to come out and do something like this, because as I found some of those new Graph PowerShell commandlets 
are not very straightforward. Or sometimes the documentation right now is not all that great. I was trying to do some things around wiping Intune devices or granting permission to people's OneDrives, trying to use those commandlets. And it just wasn't working for me, couldn't figure out. And the documentation is a little bit lacking right now. So I had to resort to a method like this of basically interacting directly with the Graph API URI. So that does it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.